Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with banana bread brownies. That's right, we're making brownies that taste like banana bread, which were as good as they sound. Plus, as an optional garnish, I'm also going to show you how to brulee banana. Or maybe I'm going to show you how not to brulee banana, since there was a little bit of an incident. But we'll get into that later. And for now, we'll start these amazing brownies by generously buttering a 9 by 9 square pan. And then if we want to be extra safe, we can cut a piece of parchment to fit the bottom. And we can lay that in and turn it over, and then press that down smooth. And you probably don't need that if you're just going to serve them out of the pan. But I wasn't sure how I was going to present this, so I decided to put that in. And then once our pan's prepped, we can mix up our dry ingredients, which are the ingredients that aren't wet. And that will include some all-purpose flour, some salt, some baking powder, as well as its good friend baking soda. And what we'll do is take a whisk and give that a good stir, just to make sure everything's evenly distributed. And once we feel like that's happened, we will set that aside and we will move on to the not dry ingredients, including the star of the show, some ripe banana. And I'm gonna use two, which I'm smashing into this measuring cup, just so I could give you some kind of accurate measurement. And yes, we do have a few black spots, since these were very ripe and very sweet. But unlike, say, banana bread, the bananas don't have to be super dark and super, super ripe. Or as long as they're sweet, they're gonna work. And what we'll do before we use these is mash them up with a fork, into a fairly fine puree, which is gonna take a minute or two using this method, but there's no way I'm gonna dirty a blender for this. So I just kept mixing and mashing, smooshing and smashing with the fork until the mixture looked like this, at which point we'll set that aside and move on to another star ingredient, some beautiful dark chocolate. And what we'll do is break up a couple ounces into a bowl, since we're gonna to need to use this in its melted liquid form. And for me, the easiest way to do that is to zap this in the microwave for like 20 seconds at a time until it's nicely melted and very stirrable like this. And by the way, we'll wanna do this right before we make the batter so it doesn't harden back up. And then speaking of the batter, once that prep's done, we will add some white sugar to some room temperature butter. Right, we don't want melted butter, but the softer the better. And then we'll take a whisk or an electric mixer and we will blend that until we have a nice light fluffy mixture and do I wish my butter was a little bit softer here? Well, yes, yes I do. But as long as it's at least this soft, everything will eventually blend together. And in a minute or two, you should end up with something that looks like this. At which point we will stop and add one large egg, plus a small but important addition of vanilla extract. Oh yeah, the pure and the real. And then we'll also at this time add our ripe fresh banana puree. And we will mix all this together until everything's incorporated. And fair warning, Visually speaking, this is going to be the least attractive step, since banana puree does not love to be mixed into this much butter. So the mixture is going to have kind of an odd look to it, and look a little bit grainy and possibly separated. But it does not matter, since once we give that an initial mix, we will stop and add our melted chocolate, and then continue blending. And you'll see as if by magic, everything will come together into a beautiful, gorgeous, smooth mixture that's gonna sort of resemble chocolate cake batter. Oh, and if you didn't work fast enough and your chocolate hardened back up, just melt it again. But anyway, once we have that all mixed together nicely, we will stop and we will add some chopped walnuts, which are a key banana bread ingredient, as well as some chocolate chips, since we really do want these to taste and feel like brownies. And what we'll do is take a spatula and give that a quick mix before we add our flour mixture, which a lot of people might dump in at the same time, but I learned the hard way as a young cook that flour can get stuck in the nooks and crannies of a walnut. And then after whatever you're making bakes, you'll see little spots of white where the flour didn't incorporate into the batter. So I prefer to add the dry ingredients last. And we will carefully mix, fold, and stir all that together. And then we're gonna use the same technique used for pretty much all batters that include flour. We are only gonna mix until the flour just barely disappears. Since any mixing after that point is officially over mixing. So like I said, as soon as that flour disappears, we will transfer that into our prepared pan and we'll make sure we're spreading that out nice and evenly, paying special attention that we're getting that pushed into the corners. And then eventually we'll smooth the top out as best we can. And once that's been accomplished, we could just bake these and we would have some beautiful brownies. But us chef type people, we're famous for trying to make things look better, especially things that don't need to look better. 
like a pan of brownies. But anyway, I decided to add some sliced banana to the top. And since I'm going to cut these into 12 portions, I laid those down in a 3x4 pattern. So each brownie would have one slice of banana. And that's it. Once we have our batter banana, this is ready to transfer into the center of a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes or so. Or until it looks like this. And like all brownies, it's a little tricky to tell if they're done by poking it with a bamboo skewer. Since if it comes out clean, it's probably overcooked. Right, what we want to see is just a little bit of chocolate on the bottom. All right, see that? That is pretty much perfect. All right, if that skewer is covered with batter, it would be still undercooked, and you want to give it a couple more minutes. But anyway, once we've determined it's cooked long enough, we will definitely let this cool down before we try to serve it. In fact, I always like to serve my brownies cold. And at this point, I think this looks perfectly beautiful, and I would have no problem serving it like this, and you probably should. All right, maybe just brush over some honey or some maple syrup to shine those slices up. But I really wanted to try to brulee the bananas, which means burning some sugar over the top, all right, if you've ever had a creme brulee, and I really hope you have, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. So what I did is sprinkle about a half teaspoon of sugar on each banana, and then I fired up my blowtorch and turned it down to the smallest flame I could. And I started to brulee, trying to be super careful that I was only burning the sugar. And I actually did very good until I got to that middle one in the back, which due to a momentary lapse of concentration, I did too much. And I'm sorry, that was done between shots. But anyway, once that happened, I had a choice to make. Have one that's too dark and 11 that aren't, or torch the other 11 more so that they might match, which for better or worse was the way I went. And because I had charred some of the crust around that one in the back, I actually went around intentionally burning some of the crust around the other bananas, just to give the surface a more uniform look. And even though it looks like things are burning, the reason I wasn't really concerned is because I knew it was not going to affect the flavor in a bad way. All right, it's the bitterness of the brulee sugar on a creme brulee that makes everything taste so amazing. So I was not concerned I'd ruin things. My only concern was the visual appearance. I mean, generally, we don't want to hand people a brownie with a burnt surface. But because of the brulee banana in the middle, I thought people would understand. But anyway, once I was finally done fussing around, I wrapped those up and let them chill completely before I pulled them out so I could cut them up and go in for a taste. Oh, and I think next time I make these, and there will definitely be a next time. I think I'll try to brulee the banana before these are baked so that just the bananas are bruleed and we do not have to worry about torching the crust. So I'll probably try it that way next time. But anyway, let me go ahead and serve this up. And that, my friends, despite that little bit of issue with the bruleeing, really ended up being a tremendous bite of brownie. Okay, the flavor of this is very much banana bread, but the texture is surprisingly close to a brownie. And in these shots, it might look a little bit on the cakey side, but they really did have a fairly fudgy texture. And I thought just the right amount of chewiness to them. And then because we did brulee those bananas, we get that little bit of burnt sugar bitterness coming through. And if I only teach you one thing in these videos, it should be that a little bit of bitterness, as long as it's not overpowering, will make all the other flavors taste better. But anyway, having said that, as I mentioned, the bananas are optional. And whether you add them and try to brulee is going to be up to you. I mean, you are after all the Howard Stern of whether your banana gets burned. But whether you garnish the top or not, if you're a fan of banana bread and you enjoy a good brownie, you are going to absolutely love these. Which is why I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.